everybody. It's uh, Mr. Cropper. Uh, welcome to the first day of virtual learning. Um, <clears throat> what we're looking at today is uh, we're talking about transformational geometry. So the best way to start here is what does it mean to transform something? So you'll see a picture of Optimus Prime transforming from robot bike to truck. And, you know, this idea of transformation, the big thing I want you to get in your head is this idea of change, all right? How do things change? You know, think of uh, metamorphosis like butterflies. You know, you got worms turned into butterflies. Uh, transforming, they change from robot to vehicle. Um, all kinds of change that happens here. And we're gonna be looking at how do shapes change? You know, what happens when a shape changes? What causes the shape to change? And uh, we're starting with our first one here. So I got a, in with here, the question is, um, I'm gonna watch a little short video, and the thing is, how would you describe Ms. Pac-Man's movements? And as you're watching this video, here's a couple questions I want you to think about. What movement did Ms. Pac-Man make? What was the very first thing Ms. Pac-Man did? So as you watch this, I want this to skip in your head, and I want you to think about, you know, how would you describe to somebody who's not watching the video, how would you describe what Ms. Pac-Man does? describe her movement. You know, what did she do? Did she, did she travel left? Did she travel right? Did she travel up? Did she travel down? You know, what direction was she facing? Did she face in the same direction all the same all the time? Was she turned a different direction? You know, what kind of things created that that movement? Was she the same size? Did she get bigger? Did she get smaller? Or did she remain the same? So all these different ideas I want you thinking about as if you watch that video. So we're going to watch a different video here. Same thing though, but the question is, what about now? What's different than what we saw before? All right, so what's different? What's the same? You know, did you notice that it's not turning, it's not flipping, it's not rotating. The only thing that's happening is it's still moving, but everything's staying in the same direction. It's all traveling to the left, to the right, traveling up, traveling down, but it's always facing the same direction, all right? And that's gonna kind of lead us into what we're working with. And, you know, we just talked about that, but what was saying what is different you know, there's not that changing of direction, but there's still movement happening. It's still traveling from one place to another, traveling in a different direction. That movement is still there. All right, how would you describe how this star went from A to B? All right, so I want you to pause the video, and then I want you to describe, you can do it on paper, you can do it in your head, how would you tell somebody how star A became star B? So go ahead and pause now, think about it, and come back. All right, so welcome back. How would I get from A to B? You know, there's lots of ways to describe it. I can describe it as moving from to the right and then down. That's one way to describe it. I can describe it as change colors here. I can describe it as going down and to the right. Or I could describe it going diagonal. But here's the thing about A to B, it's the exact same shape. It's facing the same direction. It hasn't been turned or flipped or rotated any. It's just been moved. All right? Well, let's look at a coordinate plane. So I want you to describe to somebody, how would I get from point A to point B? Now, I can't travel diagonally. I can only travel on the roads. Pretend these lines are roads, and I can only travel on those roads. So I want you to describe how would you get from A to B. So pause the video and figure out how A got to B. 
All right, welcome back. So, how'd you describe getting A to B? Did you describe it as going one, two, three, four, five, to five right, and two down? Maybe you went down first. Maybe you went two down first. And then went five right. But still got the same place, right? So A traveled to B, said five right, two down, two down, five right, still got us to the exact same point, all right? Which this is what we call a translation, so translation. And the way that I like to remember what a translation does is if I look at the S and the L in it, that is what I like to call slide. We're going to slide the points from one place to another. So for example, and this one says a translation is a transformation which slides that SL again. Each point of the figure the same distance and in the same direction. If I look at that picture again of A to B, same distance, same directions. I'm still five right to down, no matter which way I travel. So, translations, transformation with slides each point to figure the same distance and in the same direction. So, let's see what happens. All right, so to create a translation, we need to know two things. We need to know distance. And direction. All right, so those are two things that we need to know: is distance and the direction. So, how far? And which way? So here I've got this graph: of triangle ABC, translated one unit right and four units up. Draw the image ABC. So you'll see these little apostrophes right here. We call those prime. And prime is just a fancy way in math of saying the new one. So whichever one has the apostrophes, that's your new one. All right. So I'm going to translate it one unit right before you get up. So remember, translate just means slot. So I've got distance, which is the one unit right and the four units up. And I got directions, right and up. So all we're going to do is we're going to move all the points the exact same distance, the exact same direction. So I've got point A, so I'm going to start with point A, and I put your pencil on it, finger on it, whatever you want to do, and I'm going to go one unit right, four units up. So I'm traveling one unit right, and up four. One, two, three, four, and my new A prime point now lives right there. But I can't just do one point, I have to do all the points. So I'm going to go one unit right with B, and four units up. One, two, three, four. To B prime is. C prime, same thing, because all the points have to travel. One unit to the right, one, two, three, four, four units up, here becomes C prime, take my dots, and there is triangle ABC prime. Notice that the whole shape moves. It looks exactly like the original shape. That's important. But now we need this importance. So, quick review of coordinate graphing. Remember, every coordinate is always an X and a Y. This side is my positive X's, this side is my negative X's, positive Y's, negative Y's. Alright, so point A. So point A would be located at right 2 on my X, up 1, so that would be the new point 2, 1. Alright, B prime is now located at 1, 2, 3, 4 on the X, 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the Y, so that would now be at 4, Four. And finally, C prime, one unit right, four up. So the C prime, so it's at four. Actually, no, one, two, three, four. It's actually at five. Back. Five, two. And there's where the new coordinates are. All the coordinates got moved the same distance and in the same direction. All right, so now let's take a look at this one. So to start with this one, though, 
We don't have any points graphed, so we got to graph our own points. So that's our first starting spot. So zero to two. So zero on the x doesn't need to go anywhere. Up to become the first dot. That's point j. K is at three four, so that's three right three up one two three four. And L is at five one one two three four five one one. There's that. There's my three dots together. All right. So that takes care of the original one. So step A, draw JKL, done. Draw the image JKL prime after a translation of four units to the left and five units up. So we're going to move all these points, four to the left and five up. So let's start with J. Four left, one, two, three, four, up five, one, two, three, four, five. And there becomes J prime. I'm going to import it for J prime. It's at negative four. So we break the X point first. And up seven. So negative four, seven. All right, K. We're going four left. One, two, three, four. Up five. One, two, three, four, five. There's K prime. That is at negative one, nine. All right, and L prime, we're going to go four to the left, one, two, three, four, and up nine, one, two, three, four, five, I'm not up nine, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and there we go there, L prime, check the dots, and L prime is located at positive one, positive six. Are these two shapes exactly the same? Yes, they are. Now, if there's only a math word for saying that two shapes were exactly the same. Oh, and here we are. We have a math words for shapes that are the same and shapes that are kind of the same. So when we say the word congruence, everything is equal. But everything is awesome. So when everything is equal, that means sides are equal. And angles are equal. Everything is equal about. And the symbol that we use for this, and you need to know the symbol, looks like an equal sign with a full wavy line on top of it. I always think it looks like a toothbrush with toothpaste on top of it. So when we say something is congruent in geometry and mathematics, everything is equal. When we say something is similar, just put this little wavy line, and the only thing that's the same about them are angles are equal. And when we talk about translations, translations are congruent. Everything is equal about them. All the angles are the same, all the side lengths are the same. All right. So the next one says, write a general rule which describes the translation shown below. Triangle LMN is the original triangle. So, LMN, we got to describe how it got from the old one, which is the no apostrophes, to the new one, which has the new apostrophes. So if I look here, all I have to do is I have to count how do I get from point to matching point. So in this case, I'm going from, I could choose anyone, I'm just going to choose them. I'm going to M to M prime. So if I start counting, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I went six right. And then I went two up. And that describes the translation. How did it get? One, six right, two up. You're done. You just got to figure out which one's the old one, which one's the new one. Remember, the new ones always had the little prime symbol. But then we have something over here called arrow notation. And we've got to describe how did it travel using, we don't get to use words now. We have to describe in mathematics. And the way that we do that is if I show at with the x coordinate, I'm going right. If I show subtract with the x coordinate, I go to the left. If I add with the y, that's telling me I'm going up. If I subtract with the y, that means I'm going 
down. So for example, on this one, we went six to the right. So that means my x coordinate says right, x plus six. I want two up, that's up, and y, that's y, and x, y plus two. So that says the same thing. Six right is the same as saying x plus six. Two up is the same thing as saying y plus two. All right, so we're going to do this next one together. So this is error notation, write a rule for the given translation. Five units up, up one unit right. So error notation. So I would go right five. So how would I show that? So that would be x plus five. So I went right five. And y plus. One. So what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video right now, and what I want you to do is I want you to perform that translation, write five, up one, and then come back and see if your answer matches mine. All right, so pause the video now, pause the video now, and go ahead and come back. So hopefully you're back now. Your coordinates, that's where the most important part is. So if you don't have graph paper, you can still count and still do the coordinates. So the coordinates here, A prime is now at 1, 2. B prime is now located at 4, 2. C prime is now located at 2, negative 1. And D prime is now located at 1, negative 1. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the rest of these. I'm not going to put any answers on these. But what I'm going to do is I want you to try to practice these. So, pause the screen now. Try to get the coordinates. And I'm going to be posting the answers to these on Google Classroom. All right? So, you can check and see how you do. Then, there's also going to be more instructions on Google Classroom on what to do with this information. You're going to be taking the quizzes. Basically, so rewatch the video, you know, and see if there's anything that needs help. You can always reach me by email or from there. Uh, this next one, describe the translation. How did D, E, G, F move to there? So how would you write that? This one, same deal. How would you write? How would you describe the one on the right? Because that's the old one. Move to the one on the right. Left. Multiple choice question. So how would you describe this movement? If you saw the rule of x, y, x minus 7, y plus 4, how would that tell you to move the shape? So on your own practice, if you have graph paper, trust me, your course is a lot easier. If you don't, you can still use just the coordinates. You can pause the screen and go that way. All right, so here's some more practice. Pause the screen. All you have to do is write the coordinates out to the side. Here's the next one, x minus 2, y plus 4. Hmm. X minus 2, what would that tell me to move? Oh, that means go left. Two. Y plus 4. Okay, that's plus, so that's up. So up 4. So remember, every point has to move because it's got to be congruent. Uh, down here, you got to find the rules. So how would I move from point A to point B? Here's A, here's B. A's right there, B's right there. How would you get there? How would you go from C to D? C's over here on the left, B's on the right. All right, so you got to move eight units to the left, seven units down, right to new coordinates. Three to the left. Now, so remember, pause the screen, do the activity. And just one review question here. The Nice cell phone plan is $29.95 per month plus 10 cents per minute of call time. The Nice cell phone bill is $99.95. How many minutes will she be doing? All right. 